Hello my friends and welcome to the part 3 video. Today I will finish building the new UPS. In the previous episode I've modified the UPS enclosure and installed the DC converters for the three outputs, 12V, 5V and the USB Type-C with fast charging protocols. To charge the lithium iron phosphate battery I will use another constant current constant voltage buck converter and I will set the charging voltage to 14.8V for the moment. My variable power supply represents the UPS charger which is salvaged from an old laptop. Remember that the total current consumption from the charger cannot exceed 3.5 amps. This combination of ceramic resistors represents the battery. I will adjust the charging current to 1 amp. With an output of 14.7 volts and 1 amp, the converter draws 0.86 amps from the charger. At this point we can also calculate the efficiency of this converter, which is 92%. That's pretty good. But this is an extreme condition, in reality the current consumption is decreasing while the battery is getting charged. At 14.7V is the final part of the charging process, the constant voltage mode, and the battery draws only a few milliamps. But I discovered a small problem with this converter, when the mains power is out and the UPS is working on battery backup, the LED indicating fully charged remains lit. This is a powerful shot kit diode with a small forward voltage drop. I will connect it in series with the battery to block the current going back to the converter LED. Now when the mains power is on, the battery is charging and if the mains power is cut off, there is no current going back from the battery to the converter. But with this diode we need an additional adjustment. If I connect a small load, simulating the final part of the charging process, you can see the charging voltage is decreasing a bit due to the forward voltage drop of the diode. So I need to increase the charging voltage, 14.7 volts with the small load connected. If I disconnect the load, simulating the overcharge protection of the BMS board, the voltage jumps to 15 volts, but this voltage doesn't touch the battery. 14.7 volts is a bit high for a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery. That's because the overcharge protection voltage of this DALI BMS can go as high as 3.65 volts or even 3.7 volts per cell. I will leave it as it is for my small and cheap battery. If you want a lower cutoff voltage, you can use a programmable BMS board, which is expensive, or you can add a charging control module like this between the charging converter and BMS. You can set this module to end the charging process at any voltage you want, for example 14.2 volts, that's 3.55 volts per cell if the cells are perfectly balanced. I made a video about this charging control board, you can click here to watch it. These are the LEDs on the charging converter, I replaced two of them and extended the wires. Red for charging and yellow for fully charged, you can also think of yellow as ready or standby. I'm going to add some hot glue to the base of these thin wires so they don't break from the board. Let's test the LEDs. Charging. Ready. Charging. Ready. As I said, in my city power outages normally last for minutes or tens of minutes. So the converter will charge the battery with one amp very rarely and for a short period of time. It should be fine, but I will still add a heatsink on the IC, just to sleep peacefully at night. I soldered the negative wire from the BMS directly to the converter. I will install the charging module and BMS board in the left side of the UPS case. The laptop charger or UPS charger is next, you can see the case has a new cutout. I will stick a thermal switch here, which will turn on the fan if the charger heats up. This laptop charger was designed with a sealed enclosure. Now it has passive and active cooling, so it's much safer. I will mount the charger using the screws and brackets. Let's see if the mounting system is strong enough for the mains connector. This is a double pole rocker switch, it will completely shut down the UPS. One pole is for the mains input to the charger and the other pole is for the positive wire of the battery. 
I've covered all the soldering joints with heat shrink tubes as best as I could. This is the schematic for the UPS, you can also download it from the video description. The converters will receive power from the charger when the mains power is on, or from the battery when the mains power is off. But the charger and battery have different voltages. To make this possible I added diodes on each voltage rail, so the two power sources will not affect each other. The converters will draw power from the highest voltage rail, which is the charger when we have mains power. And if the mains power goes off, the voltage at the output of the diodes drops from 18.5 volts to 14.6 volts. There is no switching time from the mains to battery backup, so the converters and final loads are continuously powered. There is a small forward voltage drop from the Schottky diodes, but we will ignore it for now. This is the diode junction, and these are all the negative wires soldered together. I've insulated the diodes with heat shrink tubes and kept on tape. They look like shit, I know, but it's safer this way. The 45 degrees Celsius thermal switch will be mounted on the charger heatsink with thermal sticky tape. I will use this tiny buck converter to power the fan. Initially I set the fan voltage to 9 volts, but in the end I increased it to 10 volts, it will draw around 70 milliamps. The small converter will be mounted with sticky foam tape on the metal bracket near the fan. This is a 60 mm fan, it's sufficient for these components which theoretically should not heat up. But if you have more powerful converters and bigger loads, you must use a bigger fan. It's time for the battery, I will mount it using L-shaped brackets and small wood screws. I added a fuse holder on the positive wire and insulated the solder joints with kept on tape. Earlier I made two holes on the UPS case, and now I can easily install the battery in its position using small screws and nuts. I will use a 3 amps fuse, depending on your load you can use a lower or a higher current fuse. The battery temperature probe will be fixed between the cells with kept on tape. The battery and power supply are connected, let's test the active cooling. I will heat up the charger and thermal switch with my small heat gun, and when it reaches 45 degrees Celsius, the fan turns on. You can add thermal switches on all components that can get hot, if any of the thermal switches is triggered, it will turn on the fan. After the charger cools down below 35 degrees, the fan stops. The green LED indicates when mains power is present, it's connected directly on the charger output, in series with a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. The LEDs work, but I need the panel to mount them on. I will modify the fuse box panel, first I will remove the unnecessary plastic. It's clean now, next I need a piece of 3mm MDF, I've already made the holes and the cutout. To make this small panel look better, I will cover it in matte black vinyl. The big cutout is for a battery level indicator. It's configured for a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery, you can see how the charge level is decreasing depending on the battery voltage. It's not very accurate, because the discharge curve of a lithium iron phosphate battery is not linear, but it's still useful in an emergency. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos, please check out my Patreon page. We are getting close to completing this project, we only have a few more components to install. The plastic panel is held in position with two screws. I will fix the LEDs on the MDF panel with hot glue. The MDF panel is ready, I just need to tighten it with 4 small screws. The last thing, let's remove the protective film from this nice display. And the UPS is finished, I marked the input and the outputs. But does it work? 
Let's turn it on. We have a green LED because the mains power is on and red because the battery is charging. After a minute the battery is fully charged and the yellow LED lights up. It's showing maximum 15 volts, which is the charging voltage with no load on the battery diode. When the battery is charging and there is a load on the diode, the maximum charging voltage is 14.8 volts. Let's check the UPS outputs using a simple light bulb. At the moment the UPS is running on mains power. This is the 12 volts output. The bulb is fully lit. Let's simulate the power outage. There is no flicker on the light bulb because there is no switching time. All LEDs go out, only the battery indicator remains on. The UPS is running on battery backup. And when the mains power is back, the LEDs light up. Let's cut the mains power a few more times. The light bulb voltage and current are perfectly stable. This fuse box also has a semi-transparent cover, but I think it looks better without it. This project was long and complex. After I use the UPS for a while and probably make some adjustments, I will make another video to show you how it works in real life conditions and also to explain the calculations for all the current consumptions and efficiencies. If you enjoyed this project, please share this video and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.